something about the God of love as a God of judgment, you know, like the Old Testament style, you know, and it was more of a, you know, it was just rough. It gave me, the churches that I was going to when I was young gave me a real bad taste in my mouth because, you know, always told I was going to hell, this and that. There was no grace. And I walked away at a very young age and went my own way and just lived my life, you know, and at the age of 14, you know, I heard 13, 14, I started partying and using. And, um, you know, 19, I had my first overdose. You know, to see, 16, 17, major car wreck. I've had five overdoses and four major car wrecks. And, um, I mean, just massive oh things that I... should have killed me that the Lord protected me, even when I wasn't saved, you know. And I know Jesus is right there saying, no, don't let him go. I know he's going to come. He's going to come to us, you know. He's going to be one of ours, you know. And um, the thing is, is that I'm so grateful because, you know, I should be in hell, you know. And that's forever, you know what I mean. It's not It's not no joke, you know. This life goes by so quick, you know. I mean, so fast. And I don't care what you've done in your life. It does not matter. Jesus Christ, you know... I mean, he came for a reason, and that reason is for the forgiveness of sins. He took upon everything, every nasty, dirty thing you've ever done or thought was put on him when he was crucified. But if you don't accept him as your Lord and Savior, that goes to waste. You can't just say, Jesus died for my sins, and I'm good. I can go on and do whatever. He died for me. No, you have to accept that gift. You know, and you got to, you know, you got to get to know the Lord, you know, and build a relationship with him so you can work through this life. This life ain't easy. I mean, to, just going through it day to day. I mean, oh, my gosh, the last couple of weeks has been a nightmare for me. You know, I went from, you know, praying an hour and a half a day and reading an hour a day to in a matter of days praying for 15 minutes for a week and my thing is flipped upside down I was going through it, I mean I was so stressed out and work had taken over and taken that spot of Christ in, inside my heart and I could tell because I was just this unhappy person you know Christ has got to be number one in our life and number one in our heart when we accept him and sometimes it'll happen things will happen we'll put things on the pedestal but things will happen in our life to where we got to put Christ right back up on there because he is the reason, you know? And um, uh, there's some pretty cool stuff. Um, it talks about, um, let's see. I'm going to keep this quick because I want to do the baptism. And I don't know if the park people kick us out or whether they probably not. I don't know. Um, this stinking, glorious, beautiful wind keeps blowing. There we go. <laughs> yes, a tablet. No, I'm going to get a tablet. That's a good idea. Well, we'll be indoors next week, so it'll be great. Unless somebody's pointing a fan at me or something. I'm bringing a fan. To mess <laughs> Two of them. There we go. Um, so, in 2 Corinthians, okay, um, uh, wait, first I'm going to Second Peter. It's right here. I got it. Second Corinthians and Second Peter. It talks about all the witnesses and all the people who um, that were the witnesses of Jesus Christ when he was put to death and when he was seen, when he was re resurrected. You know, um, Paul was writing as he these letters were written and, and published. He was like, you know, there was over 500 that seen him alive that are still around today, people that seen Christ after he rose from the dead, you know. And then Peter, you know, talks about these are not fables that we made up. These things, you know, there are witnesses. He's bringing up people's names and calling out witnesses for these people that seen Jesus Christ when he was resurrected, you know. And um, you look at the fact of when Jesus Christ was put to death, all the disciples scattered in fear that they were going to die. And then three days later, Christ is resurrected, and they hang out with them for about 30 or 40 days or so. 
on earth and all of a sudden they're willing to go out and die torturous deaths for him and go proclaim his name when 40 days ago they were running for their lives because they thought they were going to be put to death too because Jesus put to death. So it is just very clear what happened. I mean, this is, this is truth. I mean, it doesn't get any more true than this. And the words in here are for the words for eternal life and also just to help us get through this life, you know. So I'm going to finish up. I'm just going to read a little part in Revelation. And then um, um, we're going to uh, pray and go over to the baptism. So in Revelation, it talks about the end times when we stand before the Lord, okay. And it's a, it's a scary, scary thing, okay? And um, this is for the people who, um, the great white throne judgment, which is the people who are not saved, who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And it says, uh, and I believe this is James when he was on the island uh, Patmos, when he was uh, secluded there to die, and he had um, Jesus Christ wrote out um, and gave him, uh, the words for this book in Revelations, which is about the end times and stuff, which um, a lot of the stuff is already happening in Israel. It's crazy. But um, it says, uh, Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from, the, from, whose face the, from, who, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And then I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, you know, from the peasant to Donald Trump, I don't know, you know what I mean, the small, from small and great, standing before God, and books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the deed, and the deed were, and the, oh, and the dead, the deed, <laughs> the, and the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which are written in the books, okay, because these people who, if we have not accepted Jesus Christ we are and into our life and ask for forgiveness, we have to take the punishment of our sins. We are, you know, if we don't accept that free gift, you know, we don't get to enter heaven. We have to pay the price for our sins, you know. What Jesus Christ did on the cross for us is, does, it means nothing to the person who does not accept it and accept him. And it says, um... So they were judged, all, you know, all of them. And then it says, uh, um, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. You know, the ones that are basically being held, kind of like a county jail waiting for your prison sentence, basically. Um, and they were judged, each one, according to his works. And then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone found not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay? Now, that sounds like crap. You know, one life and two deaths. And the second one's eternity. And the other way, you know, is two lives and one death. Which, when we die, the second life is where he says, um, you know, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven had, had passed away. First, and, um... Uh, oh crap! I'm one page over. I just wanted to read this little part about heaven and then. It's the, uh, oh, okay, here we go, right here, 21, it was just right past it, I just, I don't know, okay, so, um, um, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, God himself will be with them and be their God. We will able to be with God. 
You know, right now, because of our sinful nature, the glory of God, I mean, would just turn us into dust, you know. And um, it says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, for all the former things have passed away. Then, then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said, Write down these things, for these words are faithful and true. And he said, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of water, of li the fountain of the water of life, freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelievers, the unbelieving, the abominable murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, liars, will all have their part in the lake of fire, which burns forever, which is the second death. So, you know, that's just, you know, we're all basically have done crap like that. But the thing is, is that us who are in Jesus Christ are forgiven. So we get to partake in this awesomeness. We get to be with God in his glory. You know, just... You know, like in the Garden of Eden, I can just imagine how beautiful and lush it was before sin came into it. You know, when God, when Adam used to walk with God in the cool of the evening, it says in Genesis. You know, when, when God makes this new heaven and earth, you know, as one, and there's no sin in it anymore, no death. And, you know, we wake up from whatever, from, you know, whenever we pass on, and, you know... We're in there for eternity with God, our family, everybody at the our probably our premium age with our mortal body and our I like to think twenty four maybe or something I don't know, but um, you know I mean it's gonna be I mean awesome you know what I mean awesome compared to the flip side which is gonna be nightmares imagine your worst day on Earth you know that doesn't even compare to what you know, one second's going to be like in a place without God. That's going to be the worst part of hell, is that God is not going to be there. He is going to take his presence out of that earth. God himself is the only thing that's keeping this place together. I mean, it is just crazy, you know. It's just Satan's domain, you know. God's love is the only thing keeping his... He wants to, you know, save as many of us as possible until Jesus Christ comes back. So that's why we're supposed to go and preach the word. And, you know, it says when that last person is saved or whatever is when Jesus Christ is going to come back and the rapture is going to happen. So I just implore you guys, anybody who's not, who hasn't accepted Jesus Christ or who wants to rededicate their life to Jesus and open up their heart to him, um, I'm going to say a prayer in a few minutes. Just pray with me. And um, anybody who wants to be get baptized too, it's just a quick dunk and then that's it. It dry off. It doesn't matter. So... But I'm telling you right now that um, the benefits, I mean, I can go on and on about it, you know. Jesus Christ is the main reason that I even keep on living and have a, um, just this joy in my heart, you know. The, the joy and the void in my heart, I used to cram packed full, full of drugs and drinking and needles and anything I could get in there to try to satisfy money, power, anything and nothing would fill that void in my heart. Nothing. But when I accepted Christ, you know, I, I thought for, you know, oh, Christianity is just a bunch of chains. I'm going to be chained down. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. But the thing is, is that when I accepted Christ, it was freedom. I felt this weight that was lifted off of me. Nothing mattered. Well, I still had a drinking problem. I still was addicted to pills. I still had some problems, you know. But I felt this weight lifted. And just this, I am with you, you know. And he is still with me, you know. It's been about seven years, and there's been a lot of ups and downs. But, I mean, Jesus, man, he is someone that you want on your side. Someone you want in you. Someone, you know, it's not.